Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by co-transport. You should then be able to describe the role of co-transport in the ileum, and this is for the AQA spec. In the last video, we looked at direct active transport, and if you haven't watched that video, then I'd recommend you watch it now. Remember that in active transport, a molecule or ions moved from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration, in other words, against the concentration gradient. Active transport requires metabolic energy in the form of ATP and occurs via carrier proteins, like I'm showing you here. Now this shows direct active transport. During direct active transport, the carrier protein directly moves the molecular ion across the membrane against the concentration gradient. And for this to happen, the carrier protein directly bonds to a molecule of ATP. Now active transport can take place by a different mechanism called co-transport. We're going to illustrate this by looking at the ileum, which is part of the small intestine. The role of the ileum is to absorb the molecules produced by digestion, and this includes the sugar glucose. I'm showing you a diagram of the epithelial cells lining the ileum here. Glucose is absorbed from the lumen of the ileum, in other words the cavity, into the epithelial cells lining the lumen. The glucose molecules then move from the epithelial cells into the bloodstream. Let's look at how this takes place. After digestion, there's a high concentration of glucose in the lumen of the ileum. I'm showing the glucose molecules in green. The glucose molecules move down the concentration gradient by facilitated diffusion into the epithelial cells lining the ileum. This takes place via carrier proteins, which I'm showing in red. These glucose molecules then move into the bloodstream and are carried away. Now, there is a problem here. The rate of facilitated diffusion depends on the size of the concentration gradient for glucose. And as glucose moves into the epithelial cells, this concentration gradient falls. So this means that facilitated diffusion cannot absorb all of the available glucose. So as well as facilitated diffusion, glucose is also absorbed by active transport. There are two stages to this process. The first stage involves a carrier protein called the sodium-potassium pump. I'm showing the sodium-potassium pump in blue. Using ATP, the sodium-potassium pump actively transports sodium ions out of the epithelial cells and into the bloodstream. At the same time, it actively transports potassium ions into the epithelial cells. Now I should point out that we're only interested in the sodium ions. So now we've got a very low concentration of sodium ions inside the epithelial cells. The lumen of the ileum contains a relatively high concentration of sodium ions. So now we've got a concentration gradient for sodium ions between the lumen of the ileum and the interior of the epithelial cells. In the membrane of the epithelial cell, there's a protein called the sodium glucose co-transporter, and I'm showing this in orange. Sodium ions can diffuse through this protein down their concentration gradient into the epithelial cell. As the sodium ions diffuse down their concentration gradient, the sodium glucose co-transporter also transports glucose molecules into the cell. This means that the glucose molecules are being transported against their concentration gradient. So as you can see, glucose is being actively transported into the cell. This ensures that glucose is absorbed at a fast rate. The energy for this glucose transport comes indirectly from the concentration gradient of the sodium ion. Now, there are a couple of other things you need to remember. Firstly, the epithelial cells contain a large number of mitochondria. These provide the ATP needed for the sodium-potassium pump. Secondly, the membrane of the epithelial cells is folded into a large number of microvilli. This increases the surface of the membrane, providing more space for the membrane proteins needed for facilitated diffusion and active transport. And lastly, the glucose molecules that are absorbed are rapidly carried away by the bloodstream. This means that there's a steep concentration gradient between the epithelial cells and the blood. So facilitated diffusion of glucose into the bloodstream takes place rapidly. OK, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by co-transport and describe the role of co-transport in the ileum. 